In this video, we create an Android app which is used to generate random lottery numbers. I have made a correspondent app for iOS and if you would like to see that video, the link is in the description. For this app, I am using API 16 and chose an empty activity and select all the defaults. We are first going to build the user interface and then work on our Java code. Navigate to your styles.xml and get rid of that hideous action bar by choosing no action bar. Then navigate to activity underscore main, delete the text view and change the layout to linear layout and set the orientation to vertical. Let's add our logo to our project. As mentioned in the iOS video, this logo was created using Sketch, which is free to use for 30 days. Change from Android view to project view and find the drawable folder. Drag the logo file to the drawable folder and click OK in Android Studio. Let's create an image view to hold the logo. Give it a width of 150 dp and a height of 100 dp. Select the source, set the layout gravity to center, give it a margin of 8 dp and padding of 8 dp. However, you can customize this to your liking. I decided against the padding because it would cause the logo to get smaller. Next, let's add a text view to hold the title. It's here that I made a mistake. The name of the lottery is Super Lotto and not Lottery Generator, but this can be easily changed by changing it in the strings.xml file. All of your strings should be placed in the strings.xml because it makes for easier management. When you are ready to reference it, just type the at symbol forward slash and the name of the string. Give it a casual font, a black text color, a font size of 36 SP, padding of 8 dp, and a margin of 4 dp. And let's align the text to the center of the view. We will need a horizontal linear layout for the numbers. Set the width to match parent, the height to wrap content, the orientation to horizontal, and give it a left and right margin of 16 dp. Now let's add the text views. We want them to be evenly spaced, so we are going to set the width to 0 dp and set the height to match content. Set the text color to black. Set the default text to worn. Give it a margin of 8 dp. Padding of 4 dp. Set the text size to 24 sp. Font family to casual. Set the layout height to worn. And give it an ID of first number. Switch over to the design view to see how it looks. Let's copy and paste this text view that we created and change the ID and the text. We will need a total of 6 text views, so the second one is going to have an ID of second number. The third one is third number. The fourth is fourth number. The fifth is fifth number. But the last one is going to be Powerball. Each text view will have a layout weight of 1. So this means the views will take equal space. To see how it works, 
you can try experimenting with the numbers. The view that contains the power ball will have red text. So just change the text color to holo underscore red underscore dark. Finally, we need a button. We will need a string to store the word generate. So navigate to the strings.xml and create this entry. Remember, it can be referenced by typing the at symbol followed by strings forward slash generate. When this button is pressed, it will generate the random numbers. For the width and height, select wrap content and for the layout gravity, choose center. Change the background to the default color primary dark and change the text color to white. Set the font family to casual and add some padding. Set the text size to 30 SP and the margin to 24 DP. Lastly, give it an ID of generate button. We still have one problem. The view looks a little squeezed up. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Create an empty view, give it a width of match parent and a height of about 80 dp. The height that you choose is up to you. And that's it. The user interface is complete. Let's create some variables to make reference to our views in XML. Declare private text views and call them first number, second number, third number, fourth number, fifth number, and powerball. Give each of these variables the M prefix. All of these variables can be declared on the same line, but they have to be separated by a comma. Just make sure that you include the semicolon at the end. Also declare a variable for the generate random number button. The lottery balls are going to be stored in an array of strings. You could have used an array of integers, but you would have to use a for loop to generate all the items in the array and you would still have to convert the integers back to a string. Also, the Java method which is used to shuffle arrays doesn't work for an array of integers. There is this neat trick that I learned where I create this method called bind views. In this method, I make all the connections to the XML and then I call this method in the onCreate method. The effect is that it makes your code look more organized. We'll next create a method to shuffle our array. It will also set the text of our views to the values at index 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It will generate a random number between 1 and 10 and set the Powerball text view to that random number that was generated. The first thing that we need to do is call collections.shuffle and pass in arrays as lists and further pass in the array that we want to shuffle, which in this case would be lottery balls. To set the text, we call this method set text, which needs a string. When we reference our array at whatever index we pass in, we are actually making reference to a string value. Let's make reference to, to index zero and run our app. And here is my second mistake. I created a method, but I didn't call it. 
to call our method, we need to call it in our onCreate method. So let's try running the app again. To call the method when the button is pressed, we need to set up an onClick listener. This is really easy to do. Type the name of the button variable, then type a period and see all the available methods to the button class. Choose set on click listener and when the brackets show up, just start typing new on click listener and then hit enter. Code completion finishes the rest. So let's test out the button after we call generate random numbers in the on click listener. Great, the button works. Now let's connect the rest of the views. M second number will have the text set to the string value at lottery balls index one. M third number will have the text set to the string value at lottery balls index two. M fourth number will have the text set to the string value at lottery balls index three. M fifth number will have the text set to the string value at lottery balls index four. At this point, let's run the app to see if the numbers change. Our app runs as expected, and you'll, and you'll notice that the numbers do not repeat themselves. Lastly, let's create a random object. We create it by saying random followed by the name of our object and set it equal to new random. The creation of this object allows us to create a random number. So we will need an integer to store this random number that will be generated. Let's name it powerball and set it equal to rand.tech.nextInt and in parentheses pass in 10. That generates a random number from 0 to 9 inclusive. So to get numbers between 1 and 10, we must add 1. We will set the text of M Powerball to Powerball and add an empty string so that the value gets converted to a string. Run your app and then go and buy yourself some lottery tickets. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and to see more tutorials like this, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.